Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel here. We dropped about 50 grand on about 11 buys here, about 325 shares of stock. Thought I'd disclose it to you guys. Big difference between mine and a lot of channels out there is I can come onto YouTube and say that I bought a bunch of stocks that I never bought, or I can recommend stock that I'm just really bullish on uh, to, to, to boost my channel. I can come on and say that I bought Emu, Shimu, Dibu, Tipu, uh, but that's not the truth of it, okay? The truth of it is that this is not monopoly money. This is real money. And I guess what separates me from, uh, from the masses out there is I share what I do uh, I, I, I walk the walk and I also talk the talk. So for you guys that are interested in hearing more of a testimonial uh, on a, a retail investor's journey toward uh, financial freedom, uh, join the Independent Investor Channel community absolutely by subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you're not interested in that, you're interested in getting rich overnight, good luck on that path to destruction. Um, I, I, I bid you nothing but uh, good luck in that path of, um, um, uh, of uh, pursuing wealth in a way that typically does not work out uh, for uh, the masses. Uh, and, um, you know, when, when we talk about value investing in the way that I do, which is the absolute pedigree of um, taking on exposure to the stock market, uh, but also by limiting the risk. Um, we do so by looking at those companies out there that are the absolute best. Now, this is right, right along a 50-50 split here. Now, I'm going to share some of the ETF buys, one of which I'm, I'm owning for the first time here, establishing a fairly large uh, starting position in my Roth IRA in, in one of these ETF holdings. But I'm going to run down the list for you guys. Um, I've stopped doing the stock picks of the month. I don't see any point in it. I think it's futile. I think it's a waste of everybody's time. I don't think that there is anything that good that can come out of it that outside the medium and short term um, in that I recommend a stock and it pops 10, 15, 20, 25% or so, big whoop de doo It doesn't mean anything for the long term. And if you're looking to invest in the stock market over the long term, you really need to look into uh, considering passive investing first in diversified ETFs in the market. And I teach you about how to structurally break that down and make it um, appropriate for the specific bucket that you're looking to fund up. In other words, the product that we're looking to disclose and make no mistake about it. A stock is a product, okay? An ETF is a product, but it's the nature by, it's the nature of how you own each of these products that's important. And I think that gets missed a lot of the times. A lot of people will tune in and say, you know, Ryan said to buy small cap growth. I'm just going to invest all my wad into small cap growth and not have any type of big picture in mind why you're entering into that, to what scale you're entering into that investment. So for you guys that are interested in just hearing the goods, um, I bid you all the best luck. But if you don't internalize this opportunity and make investing a discipline in your life, you'll fail. You will fail. And I offer that consensus with uh, investing for going on three decades in my life. And I offer that with full confidence. And I hate to burst your bubble, but you want to invest uh, all your life savings into Emu, Shimu, Tibu, Awimu. Uh, you're welcome to do so. I'm not your father. Okay. Uh, I'm just a YouTube fella coming on to share tor tutorial. Let's break it down here. 325 shares purchased. I'll go ahead and break down the purchases for you guys in the description or in the comment section, kind of show you how the dollar amounts shook out and kind of why I did each of the investments we'll share in this video. The first will run down the ETF list, VIG, uh, Vanguard's um, Dividend Depreciation Fund. This carries with it a, an expense of about 0.06. There's a little bit more management in that they're trying to get those uh, dividend companies with appreciating CAGRs over time. So there, there's a little more turnover than the passive VOO, uh, right, which calls for a little bit more of an expense ratio. I'm completely comfortable taking on that. It's a fund that I've looked at. I've owned uh, VYM, which is the uh, dividend growth uh, or the dividend um, ETF from Vanguard. This is a little different approach little bit more applicable to my style, and it'll complement my triple Q holding, 
quite nicely. So the VIG is the first one that we've got going on. I added to an existing holding in VBK. For you home gamers out there, the VBK is a small cap growth um, ETF uh, also offered from Vanguard. I keep it simple. If you guys want to do Vanguard or growth from any other of the major offerers, just keep in mind that an ETF is an ETF and, and bundled up in slightly different package, but I don't split hairs on the Independent Investor Channel. If you're not a fan of Vanguard, you can seek out almost just as comparable, if not maybe even slightly better in certain cases if you do your homework, but it really kind of comes down to your own personal discretion. Um, I'm a big fan of Vanguard, and that's why exclusively my money goes to Vanguard ETF. So VBK number two on the list, VOO. Uh, is another addition this week uh, in the Roth IRA. This is becoming a fundamental holding of mine. Uh, this is a, a, a fund that I can foresee holding over the next 20, 30, 40 years, and maybe even potentially being a legacy to um, my kids, my heirs. Um, not many assets out there you can say that with. VOO is one of those. It represents the S&P 500. Um, it's a great baseline holding to hold in a Roth IRA. You know, you're getting that diversified exposure, you're getting the growth, uh, and you're getting that year over year guarantee that you're at least meeting the S&P 500 performance from year over year. Uh, next on the list is a couple of specialty ETFs that I've strategically placed in the portfolio. VNQ is one of them. Uh, VNQ is actually the real estate REIT. And I thought long and hard about this. VNQ gives me exposure to the entire sector instead of me going in there and trying to pick my favorites. Now I do own still a large position in realty income, ticker symbol O. And I recommend that stock to anybody out there who wants the absolute uh, cream of the crop as far as real estate REITs. But this particular specialty ETFs gives me exposure to the entire real estate sector. I jam it into the Roth IRA and it's a wonderful standalone to get me that exposure there where I don't want to seek the exposure via single stock in that specific sector. Okay. The last one is VPU. VPU has silently been just an absolute killer. It, it, it averages a year over year return of over 10% in a utility sector with about 60 holdings, that's it. So the deliberation with me was quite simple. Do I wanna to try to piecemeal and own some single stock and utility? Uh, and I do in certain capacities. In my dividend growth uh, portfolio, I do own uh, some Dominion Energy. I do own Duke. I do own Southern Company. I own some, uh, uh, some Nextera and some Avon Grid, I believe, are my three. And I believe there's one additional in there uh, as well. But um, th that just seemed to make sense if we could put that ETF into the Roth IRA, help supplement those other baseline holdings, and I'll own them with scale. In other words, those will not be the biggest holdings. Right now, I started those positions with about 25 shares or so. So that rounds out the ETF buys there. Um, some pretty big strategic purchases as I'm looking in 2021 to transition the portfolio to have a little bit more of an established base in the portfolio. I don't see myself having a 50-50 mix, more of a 75-25, 75% passive, 25% single stock mix. And I think over the long term, that's really aligned with my tolerance to the market and what I want to see occur within my Roth IRAs, as well as in the taxable brokerage. Remember, all of these have to kind of complement each other. Okay. Now for the six stock buys, I could just come out with a video and say, just buy these stocks and um, nobody would benefit from that. It'd be a waste of everybody's time, but um, they're pretty popular. And I, you know, boost my channel, um, which is what seemingly everybody cares about, except me. I don't care about that stuff anymore. I don't care. Um, I come on for the minutes and I fire away at the goods and that's got to be good enough. And if it's not, no problem, no love lost. Um, if you invested in some capacity in each of the five ETFs that I just disclosed to you, you'd trip and fall into success. So that's something that I won't apologize for anymore. 
on the Independent Investor Channel. I fire away at the goods. If you're willing to pay attention, so be it. If you want to look at uh, YouTube as a laughing stock to find good financial information, um, laugh away. It is a la it is a circus. It is a wild west. It's a complete joke. But for channels like myself who come on, uh, share uh, a testimonial uh, from a program that, well, it works. So if you're interested in something that works, by all means. If you're not, you're interested in buying Emu Shimu Abu Dhabi, go ahead and go do that. I don't care anymore. Okay, go do what you want to do, not your father. So these six stocks here are ones that I've added to positions in. Um, these are ones from a perspective of um, real value. Um, I'll earmark the first two of value out of order. Bristol Myers Squibb, Squibb is number one on the list in healthcare. I already own J and J, Merck, and Pfizer, but BMY, uh, BMY uh, is severely discounted right now. Um, it is uh, phenomenal in its oncology, cancer treatments. Um, a diversified suite of businesses is one that you can own as a cornerstone in the portfolio and render that nice 3% dividend over time. It's absolutely a screaming buy here. I think the last stock price was around 58. Some of the targets have it up above 100, so almost close to a 40% appreciation on some of the targets right now. It's just being forgotten in the marketplace. I offer it to you guys as a value play that I owned a position in and bought an additional 25 shares on top of my uh, already existing 50 share position in Bristol Myers Squibb. Number two, from the value uh, perspective, is the most undervalued bank out there in the financial sector, and it is ticker symbol C, Citigroup. Citigroup is trading at about six to seven times future earnings. Um, I don't know what its book trading value is right now, probably at about one and a quarter, I would venture to say. Um, and right here, if you're going to enter into a large bank, a, a globally diversified bank, I might add, Citigroup trading at seven times is laughably inexpensive for a 323 dividend. So a fantastic dividend play. I own it in two of my accounts, which is fairly rare for me. I figure if I have exposure in the dividend growth portfolio that it's it's um, is not needed to be owned in my larger accounts, but I can't pass up on the value proposition. It is the most undervalued of any of the companies actually on my list today, um, but it is one of two in the financial sectors that I think was worth taking a look at anyway. The second is the biggest bank in the world, and that's JP Morgan Chase. What a fantastic way to grab this Dow component absolutely fantastic came off a fantastic quarter um, enter into a nice 10 share position it's a nice portfolio uh, cornerstone that you can add in there one of the top five stocks that i think that you could buy and hold forever it is one of my top fives um, my top 10 really you can't go wrong with any of them but jp morgan usually tops that list it's one that you can just buy and never worry about put it in the portfolio and own it forever. Next on the list is somewhat controversial, but I think oil is coming into favor. Nobody's talked about it. Nobody. Everybody's busy talking about uh, Emu Shimu Abu Dhabi, and nobody wants to talk about the ener energy sector actually coming back with the OPEC uh, cuts coming through in anticipation of a flare-up potentially coming into the fall winter time uh, of the continuing and uh, uh, lagging effects from uh, the global pandemic. Uh, I think oil is in favor right here. No better play than Chevron, ticker symbol uh, CVX, just sit on the fat dividend here. It's gained some favor here as of late. So the time that you probably would have wanted to picked up some Chevron would have been a couple months ago. Uh, but I think there's a lot of runway ahead for Chevron as a value pick. Again, another Dow component, of course, probably the best in breed. When we're talking about the oil sector, it's one that I've always been bullish on, and it is a volatile sector. It is not for the faint of heart, but I think if you're going to go with a best in breed play within energy, Chevron is worth looking at right now. Pepsi uh, in the staples category, best in breed, diversified portfolio. Uh, across their product offering over a 3% dividend. Absolutely fantastic. Kager, uh, fantastic uh, dividend payout. Great company, well-managed, Dow component, 
big cornerstone in the portfolio, makes my top 10 of companies that you can buy and hold forever. Absolutely. It's one of those that is just a, a must have. And if you look at your portfolio and you're looking to establish, this is why my LLC is Cornerstone Capital Solutions in that you need to look at within your granular portfolio and then your, your total comprehensive portfolio and looking to establish these strategic buckets. The strategic buckets speak to the strategy within each portfolio. It speaks to the individual holdings. Pepsi fits the bill. Very, very simple. Paid out dividends over the last few decades made shareholders very, very wealthy and leveraging the power of their product portfolio that they have. Very, very diversified, very, very well run. Pepsi, ticker symbol PEP on that list. Finally, as old Ironside, Mr. Softy added to an existing position I have. Microsoft, it probably by all intents and purposes, is probably a little bit expensive right here. If we get any type of roll off in tech, Microsoft will suffer along with the grander market. I just think Microsoft is absolutely number one and two right with Apple computers, but completely different uh, in their businesses. And I think you have to own both. I really do. This is a larger position in the portfolio. It is absolutely a concrete cornerstone in the technology sector as a single standalone holding in Microsoft added to the existing position. Thought we would declare it to you guys as an opportunity to really think outside the box and think, what are those names that I want to put in my portfolio that I don't have to worry about, that I can sleep easy, that I'm going to benefit from 10 years down the line. Microsoft is going to remain relevant over the long term. And it's one of those single companies that you can absolutely justify taking a buy position in at any time. Really, it's very, very difficult to find a, an opportune time to take Microsoft. All you need to do is own it and add to it over the long term. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to the video. Again, I invite you to subscribe to my no-nonsense way of delivering the goods to you guys. Um, I do what I say. A lot of people tune into the message because they know that that's exactly what I do. No fabrication, no sleight of hand. Um, this will drop on Monday for buy orders. This is exactly what we're doing. And you guys can benefit from understanding how I seek out my exposure to the market through passive ETFs and dividend growth investing in value, single stock, gems of the stock market. Share the message with anybody out there that you know benefit from the information. Come on, get them started on the right foot. No buying emu, shimu, adibu, awibu, none of that stuff on the Independent Investor Channel. Why? Because that doesn't apply to the masses. Most people will fail at that type of group think. Be an independent thinker. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into the message, and good luck in your investment future.